Hey guys, how's it going? Jason here. Hope that you're all doing well and that your, your uh, cycling season is off to a good start. Uh, so today just got a, a little video of a time trial, short time trial that I did recently to uh, kind of celebrate my 40th birthday. I uh, originally had planned on doing a 40 kilometer time trial um, as my birthday celebration, uh, but the um, the day of my actual birthday was the, the weather conditions were not very good. Um, it, it was uh, it was cold and and really windy uh, with some serious gusts, and so I I decided that it wouldn't be safe to do. Uh, an all-out effort under those conditions. So on that day, I ended up just doing a 40-mile ride and just called it a day. And um, a few days later, this was the Sunday uh, following my birthday, which was on a Thursday, um, I decided to just go for like a couple-hour ride and to do a shorter time trial on a segment that was within that ride uh, to kind of make up for not being able to do the time trial on my birthday. Uh, so this is this uh, effort here is is not going to be any particular number. It's just a uh, it's just a segment that I chose that's that's on the route that I was doing, and um, the. The segment is called Pumpkin Hill Finish, and it pretty much consists of a couple of roads that run parallel to each other, going in opposite directions. Uh, so the, the, the start of it is on Erickson Road, which is uh, relatively flat, and then it turns right and back around, loops back around on Pumpkin Hill Road which is a, uh, a climb, but it's um, not, a, not a real steep climb. Uh, so the, the total segment is about three miles and not a ton of elevation gain, I think like 300 feet or something. Uh, so that's, that's what I uh, chose to do this effort on. Um, right here, I'm just approaching the start of the segment. Uh, you can see the, uh, Joyce got the the graphics of um, my data up there, you know, the elevation profile, the, the gradient, my heart rate, my power, my cadence, and my speed. And uh, so just around this corner is where the, the segment starts on Erickson Road. and go right about there. Yeah, I always overshoot my power a little bit at the start of an effort and then have to reel it back in. Uh, so my, my strategy for this was to do around my FTP on Ericsson, the, the flatter road. Uh, my FTP is a, about 260 watts. So I was, I was trying to hold that um, riding in the drops, trying to get um, relatively aerodynamic. I had debated on whether to ride in the, this portion in the drops or to go on the hoods in, in the aero position, you know, with, with my wrists on the, uh, on the hoods. Um, I chose to, to ride in the drops because it's easier to shift from the drops and Although this road looks pretty flat, there are some, some minor undulations where if you want to keep a consistent cadence, you'd have to shift uh, up or down one gear or so. And I really wanted to keep a consistent cadence, especially on this road. Um, so I, I wanted to keep a st fairly steady power, steady cadence riding around FTP. And then my plan for the second half or second part of the, the segment on Pumpkin Hill Climb was to go 
kind of um, zone five. Uh, I, I wanted to do 300 watts plus on Pumpkin Hill. Um, I don't think I I don't think I got that, but that's uh, that's what I was going for. See, I was trying to uh, to keep my cadence pretty high in the beginning here. Uh, I find that I tend to do this on a lot of my hard efforts. I I like keeping the cadence high in the beginning, and then as eventually I get to a point where my legs start tiring out and it becomes hard to turn them over that quickly, and then I'll at that point I'll switch over to a slightly lower cadence and more in like in the 80s rpms in the 80s and um i actually i think i probably get my best power with my cadence in the 80s um, but i also feel like my legs fatigue faster when i do that so it kind of works on a longer effort it seems to work pretty well for me to to start out with my cadence in the mid 90s and then kind of drop it down toward the end when I don't when I'm really just trying to get the power out and I don't uh, have to worry so much about um, muscular endurance at that point because I'm almost done with the effort. So yeah, I took that corner a little bit too wide and uh, probably lost a few seconds because I had to, to slow down there, but uh, but oh well. So I think I had a slight headwind on this road, and then I had a slight tailwind on the climb. So I don't know if that kind of cancels each other out. I was also uh, in an effort to be aerodynamic for this. I was trying out a new skin suit that I got uh, from the Black Bibs. And I'm also wearing the uh, aero, sh I have an aero shell attachment for my helmet, which I was wearing for this also. So uh, I'm sure I looked pretty dorky to, um, to anyone who might have noticed me riding that day. But, you know, you do what you got to do to uh, to go fast. You know, it's funny because when I first started cycling, you know, I never, never, never saw myself as uh, someone who would be wearing tights. You know, I didn't even really like wearing bike shorts in the beginning. And now here I am, you know, wearing a skin suit. And shaving my legs too. I didn't, never thought I'd be shaving my legs either, but here I am. So I'm also riding my new road bike, it's its not brand new. This isn't the first time that I, I rode it here, but I think at this point, um, f when I was doing this ride, I had been riding this bike for about three weeks or so. Um, so Joy and I both got new road bikes at the same time, and they're both the same bike, similar to our old road bikes, which were Canyon Ultimates. They were the same bike. These are Fazari. Uh, the brand is Fazari, and the the model is the Empire SL Pro Race. Uh, a few of the specs for this bike. It has the uh, SRAM Force electronic shifting, uh, twelve speed group set, and got some Zip 303s wheels, which are. They're not like full out aero, you know, time trial wheels, but they're, they have a, the rims are, are pretty deep. Um, so they're, I guess you would consider them to be an aero wheel. They're definitely more aero than, than the wheels on our old bikes. Uh, also, uh, Joy waxed our chains uh, when we started using these bikes. And, uh, so, you know, I know that's that's a pretty nerdy thing, but, um, you know, she 
read up on how to do it and figured out how to do it and you know she took the time to it's it's quite a process to uh to wax the chains but she took the time to do it and uh, i'll have to say uh the results were pretty good from it um i i think one of the main reasons for those people people that do wax their chains, one of the, the main reasons they do it is it's supposed to be, makes the drivetrain more efficient, um, which can save you some power. Um, but one thing th that is not, I don't know if that's very noticeable for someone like myself, who's not a, you know, a real strong rider. I, I might be saving a few Watts here or there, but one, benefit that that I've noticed from the wax chain is that it's you know it is a process to to prepare it but then once you start using it it's uh, so much cleaner it stays so much cleaner than um, than using a regular lube it it the uh, the wax picks up much less dirt and debris uh, from the road you know after you do a ride um, you, you pretty much just wipe the chain down uh, and that's it. You, like you just, you just wipe off any, any, uh, excess, you know, particles that are, are stuck to it. And, and it pretty much just all wipes off cleanly. And then you, you know, you, you still have the wax on there for the next, your next ride. And you don't have to re, you don't have to re-wax, uh, as frequently as you have to re -lube. So I'm on the uh, the Pumpkin Hill climb here, and uh, one thing I noticed was, uh, yeah, it's on the steeper sections I was able to keep it over 300 watts, but anytime the grade you know dipped a little bit, I was kind of struggling to to hit my uh, hit my target. Yeah, so far I really love this uh, this new bike. Um, had had really good experience with it so far. I, I feel really comfortable riding in the drops with it. For whatever reason, I'm not sure if you know if it's the width of the handlebars or just there's something about the uh, the geometry of the bike that it's just it's more comfortable for me to ride in the drops than with my old bike, and that just. I feel like that just makes me a better rider because my handling is better, particularly on downhills. Um, that's obviously not coming into play at the moment that you see on the screen here, but because I'm climbing, but um, you know, climbing is, is, is just as good as with the Canyon. Uh, but I, I feel like my handling is better on the flats and the downhills. Yeah, so this, at this point, my my legs were starting to feel a little tired, and this was, I think, my fifth day in a row of riding, and it was at the the end of really a couple of big um, big training load weeks. The week before my birthday week, Joy was off um, of school for spring break, so we did a several long rides together that week and then my birthday week I did fairly high volume also so this is kind of at the end of a big um, training or riding block for me and um, you know I felt pretty good you know going into the ride you know I I um, I actually f feel like my Performance is sometimes better when, when my legs are a little fatigued, but I was starting to feel uh, feel the effects um, toward the end of this segment here, which it's right about to end. Yeah, there it is. I don't know if you can see on my uh, my bike computer screen there, but my time was 11 minutes and 13 seconds which was a PR and um, 
I'm pretty happy with with the effort. Um, I'm currently sitting fourth place overall on the segment, and my my average power was 272 watts, which is not the best power that I've ever done for 11 minutes, but um, you know it's it's not definitely not bad either. And considering that you know, I was at the end of a um, some high volume weeks and did start to feel some fatigue in my legs toward the end of that effort, um, you know I'm I'm not disappointed with that. So yeah, that was uh, that was a fun effort. Now I'm just uh, kind of coasting downhill for a little bit here and just gonna shake out the uh, the lactate. But yeah, I really enjoy doing these these time trial efforts, um, and uh, probably I'll do a few more of them this year. So you know that's quite possible that I'll record some of those and you know maybe we'll get some other video footage of uh, future efforts on here. Anyway, uh, that's that's the end of the effort. Um, hope that you enjoyed this video and again hope that you're all doing well out there and enjoying your ride so far this season. Uh, he, here where we live in Connecticut, it's the weather has been still pretty spotty, even though it's it's starting to get into springtime. It's um, there's been some nice days and then some some days where it feels like it's going back to winter, uh, but uh, we'll get there soon. I think we're pretty soon we're going to turn the corner and start having some good weather. So I hope. Uh, that the same goes for the rest of you and you're able to get out there and uh, and get some great rides in regardless of what type of riding that is all right guys well it was it's been fun and uh until next time remember to enjoy your rides mm -hmm.